So I'm at this fucking random hotel room in Denver. I just pick a hotel room that I could afford, and I'm in there, and all of a sudden I go, let me do a bump. And I start bumping. She's calling me. I'm not answering the phone because I had the Mickey Mouse voice. I would, I would get this little Mickey Mouse voice when I did Coke, and she would know. So, <laughs> you know, like, when you eat Coke, it's, it fucking it makes your tonsils <laughs> swell or it closes your thing, so your voice. So that would always happen to me, especially when I put a Coke rock in my mouth. I'd get a freeze. Uh, this was like the worst day of my life. I started snorting like at 2 in the afternoon, and I heard like a drill. I kept hearing a drill. Zzz. I'm like, it's the DEA drilling to put like a fucking eyeball on me through the wall and shit. So I couldn't take it no more. I started looking out the window and it would be a car it would come and stop there for like three minutes then take off. This kept happening. I'm like, that's the FBI switching cars. So I went in the bathroom and I dumped the fucking ounce of Coke. The worst thing I did was there was a pitcher of water and I put a Coke rock in there to see how long it would take the Coke rock to melt just in case somebody kicked down the door. And I'll never forget that Eventually, my head won, and I ended up dumping the ounce of Coke in the toilet and flushing it. Like, I must have dumped 25 grams of Coke in there in the, in the, in the toilet. And when I flushed it, the Coke came back up in the water, and it stayed on the walls of the toilet. So now I'm coming down, and I'll never forget being on my hands and knees and looking at a hotel toilet. You could see the shit around the bottom of the rim and piss. Oh. And I'm over there licking pieces off the toilet and putting it on my tongue and putting it in my nose <laughs> like a fucking disgusto that I am. So after I thought of that story, I'm like, oh, why wouldn't I be getting my vaccine? I fucking stuck my finger in a fucking toilet. I remember one time I was doing coke at a urinal and the coke fell into the urinal. And before the piss could hit it, I took the coke <laughs> out of the fucking urinal and I started doing it before it would fucking melt. I had... You know, 200 people's piss on my fucking hand. And I just yeah. washed it off and went and did what I did, you know. So we do all these disgusting things. And then to say that you don't want to fucking put something in your body, it just doesn't make sense to me, you know, especially when you've done illegal drugs and God knows what else. So I but, used to have a guy who would bring me Percocets. And he, so my, uh, I grew, I grew up on, like around 92nd, but then I moved to back to 83rd and then I moved back to 91st street. So I was on my place on 91st and first. And my buddy actually lived in the neighborhood, but he would come like, he'd always be, you know, delivering shit to people. So he'd, he showed up at my place one time and he would fucking, they're like, don't get high on your own supply. He was the fucking, he was high from the time he fucking woke up till he went to bed and it just kept getting worse and worse. And, you know, rest in peace. He, he passed away, but he, uh, and he was younger than me too. It's fucked up. But he, one time he showed up to my, there were two times. One time he showed up to my apartment. He buzzed up. I'm like, yeah, hello. I talked to the do doorman. It's like, yeah, your boy's here. I'm like, all right, send him up. I hang up like 15 minutes later. He's still nowhere to be found. <laughs> I'm like, it takes 30 fucking seconds to get to the doorman to here. So finally, like, uh, he shows up. I go, what? or it might have even been like two days later. He come, And I'm like, yo, what happened? You buzzed up the other night and then you didn't come up. He's like, oh, I got into a fight with your doorman. I'm like, how do you, the exchange to the doorman to you, it, hey, can you buzz Rob? He's in, uh, you know, 4A. Yeah, okay. All right. Yeah, he's okay. He's on the way up. Like, thanks. And that's it. How in that time you can get into a fight still blows my mind. This is like fucking 15 years later. I'm like, how the fuck, did, how in that can you possibly get into a fight with somebody? Then another time, uh, he buzzes up. I don't say he's not there for like 10 minutes. I'm like, where the fuck? I look into the hallway and he's standing. So we used to get these sandwiches, like chopped cheese sandwiches. And they're like, uh, they're like a cheeseburger, but on a hero. And they would be like fucking 99 cents. We'd always be like, how did they make fucking cheeseburgers on heroes for 99 cents? And I open the door and I look down the hallway and he's standing in the hallway with his eyes closed, eating a fucking chopped cheese sandwich. <laughs> I'm like, yo, what are you doing? Like, get in here, you know? So he comes in. But uh, my point was he told me that day that he walked from the, the train station on 86th and Lex to my place on 91st and 1st with his eyes closed. <laughs> I was like, how are you not fucking dead? Like, crossing the street. He's like, oh, I don't know. 
But again, the reason why I, I was reminded that you brought this up is when I would get Percocets from him, I'd be like, oh, how many you want? I'd tell him, and he would just start reaching in his pocket. He'd pull out fucking money, Band-Aids, this, and he'd start pulling out loose Percocet pills and just put them on the table. And he'd be all like pu- pulling out other pills. Oh, I don't know what this is. Can you Google this? Like, look this shit up. I don't know. And it was just every like, you know, pieces of like the top of a fucking straw. Like, you know, when you, you're at a diner and you pull the... They, they give you the, the, the drink with the straw with a little bit of paper still on top. Like the, there would be that balled up in his pocket. He'd pull that shit out. Just everything he'd put on the table. And I didn't like back then, I didn't even think like, oh, this is disgusting, you know, whatever. I'd be so excited that he was because when you deal like for my personal history, when I dealt with like uh, de- Coke dealers, they said I'm going to be there at this time. They, they were they were good, pretty close, whatever. Uh, weed guys are not great, but Percocet, there's nothing like it. Like I had guys who I had, we had this kid, I, I want to say his name so bad cause it's, it's a funny nickname, but I, I can't, but, uh, he would tell you like, Oh, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm on my way. And fucking three hours later, you call me like, yo, where are you? He's gone. I'm pulling up out. I'm, I'm, I'm downstairs right now. I'm having a problem with my girl. Like I'll be up in 10 minutes. All right. Three hours later, I call, yo, where are you? He's gone walking through your lobby, like, like right now. I'm like, oh, perfect. I hang up. Fucking two hours later, I call him like, yo, you just said you were walking through the lobby. He's gone. I'm in the elevator. I call him again an hour later. He's like, yo, I'm in your hallway. Like I open up the door. I'm like, you're not in my fucking hallway. Like, where are you? He'd hang up and then I, I wouldn't hear from him for fucking 24 hours. And what he would always do because I, I, he, he was a, my buddy. And I would see him do it to other people is he would run out or he wouldn't have enough and he wouldn't want people going to fucking other people to get it, to get fucking better prices or one day, you know, lose his customer. So he would say like, uh, I'd be in the fucking car. We'd be in Atlantic City playing fucking poker. And he would tell people, yeah, yeah, I'm on fucking 83rd. I'll be right there. Like, you know, and he'd just be there with no intention of ever fucking going there. I'm like, yo, why do you? fucking do this shit he's like yo i can't lose the custies like you know he he did but i'm like these people hate you and he's again like, yeah, until i fucking bring them you know a hundred perks tomorrow and i give it to him for a dollar less than i gave it to him last time they forget all about it i'm like yeah i know because i do too you know like a fucking like an idiot but fucking dealers are on their own planet aren't they their own but in new york i gotta say in new york city coke dealers for me were always like, I call, call, there were guys you'd call at midnight, they'd be there in 30 minutes. Guys you'd call at 9 a.m., they'd be there in 30 minutes. As long as they knew, like, yeah, you didn't just want to grab a fucking gram or whatever, like you were really going to buy something. They were, they for me, they were always good. Weed guys, uh, you know, suck and they're on their own planet. And then fucking opiates, man, forget it. Like you just, there would be time... Three days later, he would show up like, oh, sorry. I, and just, and never, they wouldn't even put in the effort of like, you know, oh, I got arrested or, or this fucking happened. You know, they would be like, oh, I got in a fight with my girl. And you're like, three days? You told me you were in the lobby. Like, what are you talking? It was so fucking frustrating, man. But, 